the animal kingdom. A remarkable collection of living, breathing natural wonders. Enthralling. Impressive. Tenacious. And nurturing. Innovative. Tough. Surprising. Always genuine. Discover their past, present, and future. Just breathtaking. Just intriguing. Just tremendous. Just animals. Marsupials, a magnificently bizarre group of animals, which at first glance seem to have little in common. Creatures that walk, climb, and hop their way across one of three continents. Big-eyed, bushy-tailed, idolized and adored. What sets them apart from the rest of the animal kingdom is their unorthodox entry into the world. Marsupial young are born in an almost embryonic state, many being nurtured within an external pouch. This natural baby carrier, or marsupium, is so distinctive, it is the namesake of these creatures. They have other quirks as well. The only marsupial found in the United States is a talented actor, famed for playing dead. Meanwhile, in the Southern Hemisphere, the rowdy antics of these creatures has earned them the title of devil. Often their names are every bit as exotic as the animals themselves. Dunnart, Numbat, Cuscus, and Bilby, just to mention a few. Largely nocturnal and mostly harmless, Marsupials are nature's quiet neighbors, making them easy to miss, which only adds to the intrigue of these extraordinary animals. For all the variation amongst their kind, marsupials have a well-defined position in the natural world. They have a backbone, making them vertebrates. This phylum includes fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Marsupials belong to this last group, a collection of approximately 5,000 species that includes the largest creatures on land and in the sea. Mammals live in every climate, on every continent. Like birds, they're warm-blooded or endothermic, able to generate their own body heat. What defines mammals is their ability to nourish their young with milk from the female's mammary gland. Mammals are divided into three subclasses based on how they give birth. 
the most exclusive are the monotremes. This primitive group is made up of only five species, four echidnas and the platypus. They are all egg layers, a novelty amongst mammals. Next, the largest branch, the eutherians, animals with a placenta, which passes nutrients to their young when in the womb. These mammals are born fully developed. It's estimated there are more than 4,000 species in this subclass, many of them well known, such as gorillas, elephants, and horses. The metatherians are the final group. Marsupials are the only surviving members. Two-thirds of all marsupials are native to Australia and the neighbouring islands of New Guinea and Sulawesi. The rest can be found in the Americas, two orders of opossums. These furry creatures are often confused for their geographically distant possum cousins. But they are different animals. Opossums have a hairless tail and a more pointed snout. Plus, they enjoy an omnivorous diet. Marsupials are an eclectic bunch of animals. More notable for their differences than what they have in common. Globally, placental mammals outnumber marsupials 10 to 1. Except in Australia, where the pouched population makes up more than half of all native mammals. From the two meter tall red kangaroo, to the finger-sized, long-tailed planigale. They dominate the outback landscape. Little wonder these iconic creatures are at the heart of Australia's ecological identity. This continent is home to three main marsupial orders, loosely categorized by what they eat. The first and most familiar group are the plant-eating diprotodonts. This name comes from the Greek, meaning two forward teeth. These herbivores have a pair of large incisors to slice through leaves and grass. Koalas, possums, wombats, and kangaroos all fall under this classification along with almost 100 other species. Apart from their plant-based diet and prominent teeth, this order has another common trait. The second and third digits on their hind limbs are partially fused, or syndactyl. Of all marsupials, there's one diprotodont that gets the lion's share of attention for doing very little. Koalas spend up to 20 hours a day sleeping, thanks to their low energy diet of gum leaves. These marsupials are endemic to Australia, with their population confined to eucalypt forests in the country's east and south. Adults range in size from 60 to 90 centimeters and can weigh up to 14 kilograms. Their gray fur blends with the tree trunks, making them difficult to spot in the canopy. The koala's camouflage is so effective, European settlers failed to sight them during the first 10 years of colonization. Despite their sloth-like demeanor, these marsupials can run at up to 30 kilometers an hour when they transfer between trees.
Their closest relatives are even faster. With short legs and squat bodies, wombats are unlikely sprinters. But if under threat, they can travel at speeds of 40 kilometers an hour over short distances. These solid animals can grow more than a meter in length and weigh up to 35 kilograms. Like koalas, they're predominantly found in Australia's southeast. But they can tolerate a wider range of climates and habitats. There are three species of wombats. The common, plus the northern and southern hairy-nosed varieties. All three are very similar in appearance, but the common has smaller ears and coarser fur than the other two, which helps to insulate them from the cold. While wombats are creatures of the ground, their possum cousins prefer life in the treetops. There are 70 species native to Australia and its neighboring islands. At around 10 centimeters in length, the Tasmanian pygmy possum is the smallest. This sweet-toothed marsupial feeds on nectar from native plants in southern rainforests. It builds nests for itself in the trunks of trees and lines them with shredded bark for warmth and comfort. One of the largest Australian possums is the brush tail named for the furry appendage that helps to keep it anchored on branches. While they are common, brush tails can be difficult to see as they tend to take refuge in tree hollows. This goanna, however, is having no trouble sniffing out a stowaway. This normally placid marsupial is, however, up for a fight. combination of agility and two sharp incisors help it to escape. The ringtail possum is around half the size of its common cousin. Its prehensile tail is more slender, but equally useful for gripping. Ringtails live amongst the canopy in forests along the eastern and southern coasts of Australia. Occasionally, they venture to ground level. Climbing is a fine form of locomotion for most possums, but this group have taken things to the next level. Members of the glider family can spend their entire lives out of reach of land-based predators thanks to a carefully hidden feature. A loose membrane extends between their front and back legs. When stretched out, it can act like a sail. With a bushy tail as a rudder, they can coast up to 50 meters between tree trunks. These small animals range from the palm-sized feather tail to the slightly larger squirrel and sugar gliders. From petite aerialists to the biggest members of the possum family, which have often been mistaken for other animals. Cuscus live in the tropics of northeastern Australia, New Guinea and Indonesia and weigh up to 10 kilograms, around the same size as a koala. With their large bodies and strong tails, they were initially thought to be monkeys. Their broad faces have been confused with bears. But being marsupials, the females have a pouch to house and nurture their young.
The second major order of Australian marsupials is Dasyuromorphia, a group of ground-dwelling, sharp-toothed carnivorous species such as dunnarts, quolls, and Tasmanian devils. Devils are the largest of the carnivorous marsupials, about a third the size of a wombat. They might be modest in stature, but their strong jaws more than compensate. Tasmanian devils have the most powerful bite relative to body size of any meat-eating mammal. When teamed with sharp teeth and a feisty temperament, these animals have a reputation for being ferocious, which is largely undeserved. Tasmanian devils rarely attack. Usually, they scavenge for carrion rather than killing their meals. They were once found all over Australia, but their abundant supply of food disappeared when dingoes were introduced 4,000 years ago. At present, devils are only found in the island state of Tasmania, making their homes in hollow logs or burrows. On the mainland, their quoll cousins have replaced them as the top marsupial carnivore. There are six species of these animals, including two in New Guinea. The largest is the spotted tail quoll. It grows to around five kilograms, the same size as a small cat. These accomplished climbers shelter on branches when they're not searching for their next meal. Surprisingly, most of the carnivorous marsupials are the smaller members of the family. Dunnarts are the size of a mouse, but these tiny creatures have a huge appetite. Every night, they devour the equivalent of their body weight in spiders, crickets, and beetles. 19 species are spread across Australia, most being found in the country's desert center. A larger carnivorous cousin inhabits a more restricted range. Numbats live in woodland areas in the southwest of Australia. Thanks to their exclusive diet of termites, numbats are in a class of their own. Along with their specialized diet, Numbats are one of only a few marsupials active during the day, which means they're constantly on the alert for predators. The numbat's striped coat provides some protection. Their natural camouflage works with the dappled light filtering through trees to give them cover while digging for termites. The third main order of Australian marsupials is called Paramelomorphia. These animals enjoy an omnivorous diet, dining on both plants and meat. This group includes bandicoots and bilbies, small terrestrial animals with long snouts designed for fossicking on the ground. Bilbies are similar in size and looks to a rabbit. Their long, hairless ears are rabbit-like, as is their easy loping gait. But that is where the resemblance ends. Bilbies are desert dwellers, where they dig for insects and seeds. Their marsupium facing backwards to protect their young from flying dirt. Their closest relatives are the bandicoots. They lack the long ears of the bilby, but travel in a similar way, relying on strong hind legs, like their distant macropod relatives, such as the kangaroo. The 21 species of bandicoots 
are found in coastal forests of Australia and New Guinea. The other side of the globe, in the Americas, is where the rest of the marsupials can be found. The opossums. About the size of a house cat, the Virginia opossum is the only one native to the United States. In comparison, their South American relatives are smaller, with softer fur. Monito del Monte is Spanish for little monkey of the mountain. These animals named for their quick movements and hairless feet. It's also regarded as a living fossil, as it's the only remaining member of an otherwise extinct order of marsupials. From mountains to deserts, treetops to burrows. This resourceful collection of animals has found a home in virtually every nook and cranny. Marsupials, like other animals, have a simple approach to life, primarily focused on survival and comfort. Various features, adaptations and skills help them meet their goals. With koalas, trees are central to their existence. Tree forks are sturdy, but hard places to rest upon. But these rotund animals have made some modifications to boost their comfort. They have a cartilaginous pad at the base of their spines, plus extra thick fur on their rump to provide cushioning. To help them wrap around trunks and branches, koalas have a curved backbone and two less pairs of ribs than most mammals. Four paws with two opposable digits and sharp claws allow them to hang on tight. Strong thigh muscles and tough, textured skin on the soles of their feet make climbing easy. Some of a koala's more endearing features are also it's most useful. Their unusually large nose helps them detect the safest leaves to eat. Eucalyptus foliage is poisonous to most animals, but a koala's digestive system can detoxify the chemicals, making the leaves safe for consumption. As for their fluffy ears, in relation to body mass, they are some of the biggest in the animal kingdom. They not only provide this marsupial with an excellent sense of hearing, but also a way to communicate emotions. Ears positioned backwards can be a sign of agitation. Upwards, if they're alert. And forwards, when relaxed. Male koalas have other ways to communicate. In the breeding season, they can bellow to assert their dominance. And to mark their territory, they have a dark scent gland in the center of their chest that oozes a dark, sticky substance that rubs off as they climb around their favorite trees. They may have beauty, but they don't have much in the way of brains. The koala has the smallest cerebral mass of any marsupial in relation to its body size. Wombats also favor brawn over brains in their bid to survive. Like the koala, these sturdy animals have a tough rump. But theirs is used for protection. 
it all relates to where they live. Wombats are prolific diggers. Strong legs and sharp claws help these bulldozers of the bush plough through about a metre of dirt per day. Their burrows are a sanctuary to avoid predators. And they always enter head first, leaving their substantial backside to block the entrance. A solid plate inside their rump, plus the absence of a tail, makes it difficult for attackers to grab on. These solitary creatures are also keen to keep other wombats away. They do so using a novel technique to mark their territory. Thanks to the unusual design of their digestive system, they produce cubed scats, which ensures these pungent keep-out signs do not roll away. Tasmanian devils take a more forthright approach to guarding their turf. While the majority of marsupials are quiet creatures, devils can make 11 different sounds to communicate. Despite appearances, these are sensitive animals. Most of their noises are produced out of fear rather than aggression. Tasmanian devils have an acute sense of smell. They can detect carrion from two kilometers away. Hearing is their dominant sense, but they also have excellent night vision, especially if the object is moving. Long, sensitive whiskers act like a radar for the devils, picking up any prey they've missed. Their tail is also a generous length, which helps to balance their body when they run and stores excess fat for when food is scarce. The Virginia opossum is famous for its unusual survival strategy. If threatened, they pretend to be dead. To make the act more convincing, they emit a foul smell. It's one of the many talents that marsupials rely on to survive and thrive in the natural world. No matter how much they differ from each other, all marsupials are thought to have originated in the same place, North America. They split from placental mammals about 125 million years ago, heading south to the megacontinent of Gondwana. With less competition for food, their numbers flourished. But their journey hadn't ended. Over the next 70 million years, many marsupials left South America and crossed the once temperate forests of Antarctica, making their way to Australia. There, early marsupials diversified, some becoming part of a collection of giant animals known as megafauna. The diprotodon was the largest prehistoric marsupial. It grew up to three meters long and weighed almost three tons, around the same size as a hippopotamus. This massive herbivore was an early relative of the wombat, Scientists believe it is the only marsupial that migrated every year in search of food. While it wasn't as large, Thylacolio carnifex was a more fearsome animal. As Australia's largest ever carnivorous mammal, it was the same size as a tiger. Its large, stabbing incisors and sharp cheek teeth made it a formidable predator. About four million years ago, another carnivore emerged. The thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger. The size of a medium dog, it is now thought to be extinct. 
After 130 years of settlement, they were wiped out in the wild. While the last captive animal passed away in 1936, unconfirmed sightings still occur. Today's marsupials have a wide range of relatives. All mammals share some DNA with them. Within their own ranks, the evolutionary ties are tight. Bilbies once diverged from bandicoots. Tasmanian devils are closely related to quolls. And koalas are cousins of wombats. Unique, yet similar. All marsupials have descended from the same gene pool. Their ancestors going to great lengths to ensure the future of this unusual assortment of creatures. Every family of animals has certain common behaviors they all share. As a general rule, marsupials enjoy their own company. The majority prefer to live away from other members of their species to decrease competition for food. Koalas don't like to share their foliage. They have a home range of up to 20 trees. As they deplete the pick of leaves on one, they climb down and move to the next. While the territories of a dominant male and several females may overlap, it's unusual to see two koalas in the same tree. Unless it's a mum with her offspring, or it's breeding season. This is when males can show the less cuddly side of koalas. Wombats roam over larger areas, but like koalas, it's rare to find more than one at a time, except when they're ready to mate. Surprisingly, Tasmanian devils are fairly tolerant of their kin. As youngsters, they'll often share a den with siblings and engage in good-natured play fights to hone their feeding skills. As adults, a devil's range can cover up to 20 square kilometers, so encounters with rivals are common. Despite their reputation, they can coexist relatively peacefully. Some grazing marsupials, such as kangaroos and wallabies, will gather together in mobs. But there's no leader or structure to this loose social group. Bilbies are another marsupial that sometimes cohabitates. At night, these shy creatures often feed in pairs. Two sets of ears are better than one to listen out for danger. If they suspect a predator is near, they'll retreat into the safety of their burrows. It's common for females to share these underground homes. They're not only a good hiding place, but a sanctuary from the desert heat. This is a bilby's sleeping quarters, and where they perform their essential grooming. It's an extensive routine but not communal. Each bilby is responsible for its own scratching, nibbling and licking to remove parasites. Sugar gliders are more cooperative with their daily rituals. These social animals help each other preen. Up to 10 of these flying possums can share a nest in cooler climates. 
huddling together for warmth. It's an arrangement at odds with most other marsupials, who are comfortable facing life on their own. Compared to most other mammals, marsupials have a challenging start to life. Their time spent nestled in the womb is incredibly short. Placental mammals are born well-developed after months of absorbing nutrients from their mother through an umbilical cord. Marsupials only have weeks in the uterus. And during that short stay, all their nourishment is delivered via a rudimentary yolk sac. Not surprisingly, they emerge only partly developed. These tiny, hairless, embryonic creatures find their way to their mother's pouch. Then they latch on to a teat, which swells to keep them securely in place for a lengthy period of lactation. These infants spend months in the marsupium. By the time a baby koala or joey is on display, it's undergone a dramatic transformation. At birth, it's about the size of a jelly bean, but only half the weight of one. In the pouch, it initially relies on milk for its sustenance. Eventually, another less savory substance is added to its diet. Pap is a liquid form of feces, packed with gut bacteria the growing infant will need in order to digest eucalyptus leaves. At seven months, the joey is a miniature version of its mother. It will cling on tight for up to a year, a relationship that's sometimes a little too close-knit. The time and energy devoted to their offspring means female koalas only produce one joey a year, and no more than six in their lifetime. Wild koalas usually survive for about 12 years. Wombats have a similar lifespan, but produce less young. They only mate every two years. And, like the koala, keep their single offspring tucked away in their pouch for several months. Tasmanian devils prefer to increase their odds. After 21 days gestation, Pregnant females can produce up to 30 joeys. Less than a handful, however, get the chance to make it to adulthood, as there are only four teats in the pouch. These curious joeys are about four months old, the age they leave their den to explore the wider world. For them, it's a short but active life, which ends after about five years. Virginia opossums also like the survival odds that come with large families. Females can deliver three litters a year of up to 25 babies. Out of each batch, about a third survive. Virginia opossums and numbats have some of the shortest gestations of any marsupial. These mums giving birth 12 to 14 days after mating. Sugar glider joeys only spend a day or two longer in the womb, followed by six weeks in their mother's pouch. They usually arrive in pairs, 
and, despite the rushed infancy, remain with their families for almost a year. Once they go their separate ways, they can live for up to nine years. One of the smaller marsupials, yet with one of the longest lifespans. They may appear to be timid and defenseless, but this select group of mammals has to be tough to survive their start in life. When it comes to food, the marsupial diet varies as much as the animals themselves. Some are strictly meat eaters. Many will only eat plants. While others consume a combination of both. What they do have in common is a metabolic rate 30% lower than placental mammals which means they require less food and, in many cases, less water. Koalas are one of several species that absorb enough fluid from what they eat. This trait is so unusual amongst land animals, these iconic marsupials were named for it. In one indigenous language, koala means no drink. But it's their food supply they're renowned for. They can eat up to a kilogram of eucalyptus leaves every day. But not just any greenery will do. Of more than 600 types of eucalyptus trees, only a handful are acceptable to these fussy eaters. For all their pickiness, their chosen food is far from ideal. Apart from being toxic, gum leaves are low in nutrition and high in fibre, requiring a lot of energy to digest, but not a lot of gain. To avoid triggering the toxins in the foliage, koalas need to chew constantly to create a paste their body can safely process. Their long digestive organ, called a cecum, contains millions of bacteria. This is where fibres are broken down and nutrients are extracted. This process takes four days. At the end of this time, only a quarter of the fibre consumed is absorbed. Wombats also take several days to digest their food but the diet of these herbivores is less restricted. They'll eat whatever plant material they come across, including native grasses, dry leaves and bark. Their teeth grow continually to ensure they're never ground down by tough food. Tasmanian devils are not wasteful beasts. They'll devour entire carcasses of small mammals, birds and reptiles in group feeding frenzies. The noises they utter while feasting are more than just an expression of satisfaction. It's a way of asserting dominance amongst their fellow diners. Virginia opossums have a broader diet. They scavenge the forest floor looking for fruits, insects and rodents. Fifty sharp teeth allow them to eat the skeletal remains of small animals. Not only does this boost their calcium levels, it helps to keep their natural habitat clean. The Australian honey possum is another marsupial that helps the world around them. Their name, however, is misleading. These mouse-sized animals have nothing to do with the byproduct of bees. Instead, they drink nectar from native flowers. 
Their long snouts dig deep into bottle brush and banksia plants, so their tongues can reach the sugary liquid. In the process, their heads get covered in pollen, which is then transferred to the next bush they feed from. A free meal for fertilization services. While they may be nature's helpers, they're still on the menu for several hunters. Australian marsupials have few native predators to fear. Most carnivores hunting them were introduced by humans, starting with the dingo. In addition, feral cats and dogs, along with foxes, all target marsupials on the ground. Eagles, owls, snakes and lizards also attack arboreal species. Their best hope of avoiding predation is to stay out of sight and only eat when the danger is less. So, for most marsupials, nocturnal feeding is the way of life. Marsupials are amongst the most celebrated animals in the world. A combination of delightful behaviours and teddy bear looks endearing them to millions. Koala joeys are thought to have been the inspiration for the first teddy bears made in 1903. Koalas, along with many other Australian marsupials, have been featured on stamps and starred on coins. Bilbies finally got their turn in the spotlight about 30 years ago, promoted as an alternative to the traditional Easter bunny. Wombats have a town named after them. The Tasmanian Devil's fierce reputation has gone global, thanks to the antics of one animated character. While not every marsupial is universally adored, the love affair with these charming creatures is gradually expanding, as more obscure members of this family of animals finally get their moment of fame. For such cherished animals, many marsupials struggle to survive, often due to the impact of humans. Sadly, one in five is listed as threatened. Tasmanian devil populations have a particular problem. A highly contagious cancer known as devil facial tumor disease. It's spread through biting, and since it was first diagnosed in 1996, it's estimated 80% of devils have died. With this unique animal at risk of disappearing, government and conservation groups are working together, building up disease-free insurance populations on the mainland. Eventually, when numbers are sufficient, these clean devils will be released back in the wild. Koalas are battling their own health issues, many suffering from chlamydia, a bacterial infection that causes blindness, infertility and death. But that's not their only challenge. 80% of the koala's natural habitat has been destroyed in the past two decades through development and natural disasters. There's thought to be less than 100,000 of them remaining. Saving one of Australia's most famous animals has become a priority. Public awareness campaigns focus on protecting remaining habitats and expanding them through the planting of native trees. Happily, other marsupials are thriving without the help of humans. The number of tiny Mulgara living in South Australia 
has increased 70-fold in the past 20 years. Populations of South American opossums continue to grow. Their success is put down to a lack of predators and their ability to adjust to the food and habitats available. The future of marsupials is all about education and action. Devoting resources to not only helping the familiar faces, but the lesser known ones as well. A vulnerable group of creatures united by their challenging start in life and outnumbered by most other species on Earth. Marsupials have quietly endured to earn their special place in the animal kingdom. <laughs>